to New York to meet Dr. Pavel Krastev. Dr. Pavel, welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning to the world and all of our dear friends. Uh, Dr. Bach, uh, I'm deeply honored to have this opportunity to meet you today for the first time here. I've met you before during uh, the beautiful uh, interviews you have done. Uh, 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 and I want to uh, uh, specifically thank Dr. Shah and the Global Summit Organization for putting us in touch and giving me this opportunity today. And uh, I hope everyone out there is healthy and, uh, and being safe as we uh, recover from this crisis that's going on with this COVID. So Dr. Pavel, I've been through your profile on LinkedIn and it said that you're a pioneer and an inventor above being a dentist. We'd like to enlighten us a little bit. All right, so about, uh, I'm gonna say six, seven years ago, uh, I woke up one day, I, I guess a brick hit me in the head or something. Uh, and uh, I started playing around with a magnet, just a simple little magnet. And then what happens to me is when I work, I notice now. Let me let me mention one thing. I'm a general practitioner, and uh, uh, I do everything in my office. We have a very small practice that my wife manages. Uh, but sometimes when I do implant surgery, which is probably about sixty percent of what I do in my practice, I feel that certain things are missing. I feel that certain things can be uh, uh, done in a better way. And so when something annoys me professionally, that when I'm doing surgery or working. I start thinking about how I can improve this. How can I make it better? How can I treat the bone more delicately uh, in comparison to certain other systems that are in the, on the market? So this thought process wakes up ideas in me. And I don't know if you look behind my wall there. Those are all folders of all the patents and the applications. And uh, uh, I've been working with a lovely, lovely uh, patent attorney. His name is Thomas O'Rourke. And uh, you know he's a genius in my book and he's guided me for all these years to uh, how I've accomplished this. Uh, some of the products, uh, I did a lot of work on sinus elevation and Cresto lifts more specifically, which is currently not on the market. Uh, but we have other products that are on the market, which we won't discuss today because again, this is not uh, some kind of a sales pitch or I'm not trying to sell instruments. Uh, I am a key opinion leader for Helmut Zeff uh, and I do work closely with them. And uh, basically, they have exclusive rights to uh, uh, carry my products, manufacture them, distribute them, and sell them across the world. Uh, so, you know, one thing led to another, and one patent led to another. Uh, the same, uh, I guess, you know what it is? We all have certain talents. Uh, some guys are experts in the literature. Me, personally, I am not an expert in the literature. I just don't have time to read as much as I'd like to. Uh, Certain people write books. I mean, you, uh, God bless you, 66, the last I remember, 65. You know, this is, this is incredible stuff and incredible achievements. You know, others of us, uh, for example, Dr. Keanu Shah has this incredible energy, which I certainly don't, to do this massive operation uh, in this, uh, running this organization with all the board regions, with a peer-to-peer, with basically essentially the whole world uh, partaking in this. This is not uh, uh, one uh, godfather sitting at the top giving orders. This is this is our whole profession coming together and, and sharing willingly what we should all share across the world. Uh, for example, I mean, for many years in my life, I was sitting in my practice and it was, you know, do this procedure, go home, do this procedure, go home. You know, then you open your, uh, 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 your mind a little bit and you start educating yourself and you start interacting with colleagues. But, you know, for all of us, it's difficult to connect across the globe because we live in different countries. So many of us are limited in, uh, in how we gain knowledge. And many of us, unfortunately, we think, well, in our country, we do it the best. And in your country, you know, you guys do it the best. But, but peer-to-peer, and this is uh, something I really want to touch on, um, uh, is not just dentists. Peer-to-peer is Dr. Prashant. Uh, Dr. Prashant did a beautiful interview that uh, I watched probably three times. He, he basically uh, uh, spelled it out uh, in such a good way that I don't want to repeat everything he said, as well as the interview with Dr. Shah that you had. But the point is this, bringing the globe together on this beautiful platform is never been done. Okay, everyone thought it was impossible. Uh, uh, the regents, the, 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 the advisors, uh, which I'm proud to say I'm one of them, uh, but that's not the point of it. It's not about me. It's about all the beautiful people that participate in this. So one thing I want to clarify that I believe many are confused about, 
when we say peer to peer and that we reached 2.2 million people, these are not just dentists, all right? Because in the globe, we have, I think, uh, 3 million plus dentists altogether. So these are, these are experts from medicine. These are, these are uh, hygienists. These are uh, the office managers. These are people like, like you and me, uh, you know, and it's an incredible effort that I am honestly just like so proud and thankful for being a part of. So getting back to uh, my patents for years, I uh, uh, worked and came home and worked some more. And now I think I'm done inventing because, you know, it's an exhaustive process. <laughs> if you go back and forth with the United States Patent Office and uh, uh, it's, it's not easy, but it's a pleasure. The other thing that I'll mention professionally um, uh, um, about myself, I guess you're conducting the interview, but I'm just, I like to talk a lot. So stop me at any time. So I graduated dental school from uh, New York University in uh, 1993. I uh, was invited immediately to stay in comprehensive care and work basically as an instructor for two years with the uh, fourth year students, which was a pleasure for two years. At the same time, I started a practice with essentially nothing. Uh, uh, so I was there for about 10 years. Uh, uh, I'm originally from Bulgaria. I don't know if many people know that. Uh, I came to the United States at age 11. And uh, I come from a, a line of uh, family of doctors. My father was a dentist who uh, basically did not pursue this in the United States. He had a family to support. Uh, I have uncles, orthopedic surgeons, aunts, uh, anesthesiologists. My cousin, Veronica, is a dentist in Germany. My wife finished medical school. Her parents are medical doctors. Her brother is a critical care pulmonologist and her aunt is an MD. So we kind of grew up in a family of doctors. So we, you know, our brains are in a way programmed to uh, uh, pursue this. The first question I have for you, how many patents do you have? You know, that's a damn good question because I don't count. Uh, I believe 10 <laughs> or 12. And, 12 uh, patents. There, I, I can check exactly and get back to you on that because there's other patents that are still pending. But uh, I, I, they're all utility patents, which are um, much more difficult to, uh, to be able to obtain, obtain rather, and um, um, uh, carry much more value. Uh, I believe we have one design patent that I think still has not been issued. Oh, oh! I mean, you want to laugh? I actually have two patents on flip flops. So at one point in my life, I invested a decent amount of money into uh, uh, developing flip flops. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm the dentist, you know, the shoemaker. Uh, you're looking at him. You know, so I'm a dentist who actually made shoes. <laughs> so that company was actually, uh, 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 my product was sold by, I forget what company was it, yeah. by Beth Bed and Beyond. And then I uh, basically gave up on that project because it was a, wa a waste of time. So. <laughs> so I have to say, you are very passionate. And you said that you were impressed by me writing 66 books. I am humble. Talking to you with all patterns. <laughs> no, but, but, you, but you know something funny? I can't spell for my life. I mean, I, I you know, I, since a kid, all my teachers told my mother, you know, where's this guy learning his English? I mean, he can't spell. I, you know, I can't spell. We all have talents. But here's what, you know, my big belief, and usually when I lecture publicly, I, I start off with one thing. I say, our profession is about love and passion. And what I mean by that is that we all should love what we do and do it with a tremendous passion because that's how our patients benefit. Uh, we're not salespeople. I certainly am not. Uh, I dedicate a tremendous amount of time uh, interviewing all my patients. As I said, I'm the only dentist in my office. Uh, I'm not a DSO operation where there's 20 doctors that are changing, uh, 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 getting hired and fired every week and patients have no clue what's going on in their mouth. Uh, I'm certainly not an advocate of uh, 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 selling dentistry to patients. Dentistry sells itself to properly educated patients. So my wife and I uh, uh, spend an exuberant time, amount of time discussing treatment plans, discussing options, and essentially guiding our patients in the right direction. And then the final choice as to how they proceed really is up to them. Uh, uh, so, so that's the kind of practice I run, and that's probably why I'm still poor. Uh, but uh, that's besides the point. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're on many things, but poor is on one of them. <laughs> you 
be surprised. <laughs> Sir, this interview was supposed to be looking at dentistry and how people are reinventing themselves through this crisis. Yeah. You've already been through that several years ago. So uh, I'd like to get to, to, to the main point. How do you overachieve as much and s is still that passionate? You know what it is? I'm a, I'm a guy that basically comes from the heart. When I'm friends with someone, I, I'm an open book. I share with my dear friends things about me that are pretty, things about me that are not pretty. You know, I trust my friends. So it's, it's, a, it's almost like a calling I have. You know, I want to leave a little mark in dentistry with certain products that I hope will uh, uh, do well in our profession. Not because I will gain a few dollars, which you know, I clearly want to state one thing. I do earn royalties from Helmut Zev only on my products that they carry. Uh, but anyway, it's not about Helmut Zev. Uh, I want to, you know, I want to touch a little bit about not about myself and my achievements, but rather about the COVID situation. You know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we are in New York, we are in the western part of Long Island, and COVID when when it started, it devastated New York, uh, and we were one of the hardest hit areas. And uh, unfortunately, we followed and obeyed all the uh, uh, regulations. We shut down. We didn't work for, I believe, three months. And then we opened up back uh, uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, it's, been, it's, it's a new world, uh, working for all of us across the globe with these N95 masks is a nightmare. You can't breathe through them. They, they limit your oxygen by 20%. Uh, we are trying to follow all the uh, current protocols and sterilizing the rooms. We have UV lights running everywhere all night. You know, it, 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 it's a challenge for all of us across the world. But unfortunately, uh, we got hit very hard in New York. And uh, luckily and thankfully, uh, 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 the, the, you know, the, the curve has dropped significantly and we're trying to restart and reinvent our lives. And uh, it's not easy. Uh, we certainly, in my practice, are limiting to how many patients we see per day. Uh, in my practice, we generally see on the average uh, about six patients a day, no more. Uh, uh, so now we're doing probably three to four because we need to sanitize and clean everything the right way and to basically limit uh, elective work. I'm still choosing myself to basically limit some of the elective things people want done today. I tell them, please let's wait until this even calms down even further. So I'm still focusing on, on finishing cases that were started before the COVID crisis. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we're trying to do essentially what's best for our patients right? and then their protection and our protection. But going through again, I'm going to just read some notes that I have while you were speaking. It's uh, you are a source of positivity. The words I'm hearing, it's improvement, it's share, it's open mind, it's connect, it's peer to peer, it's trust, it's come from the heart. And rarely we had three months in our life to think about ourselves, to think about our future, think about a profession. So I know that many of our peers are wondering what's next and how can they just get ahead of this crisis, uh, reinventing themselves. Uh, I wasn't hoping as much, but just through your introduction, you have that art to reinvent yourself over and over again. What would be an advice you can give to all our peers listening to us say, I, I love my profession. I want to keep doing it, but I need more. Wow, that's a that's a pretty tough one. I need to you know think I'm at my age at 52. You know, it's uh, I'm not so sharp and so fast. The, I think the most important thing is for for ourselves to uh, think logically, to have uh, strong families behind us, and you know now we're I mean now like with this peer to peer thing, you know I consider the entire globe our friends. I love all colors, I love all religions, I love all, all ethnicities. I just dislike people that don't hold the proper ethics and people that conduct themselves in unethical manner. Those I have no room for in my life. You know, others can judge for themselves. So the positivity is across the globe, we are going to struggle in different countries at different rates because the COVID has essentially, uh, it attacks at different rates at different times. We have to uh, 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 grab each other by the hands, you know, 
be brothers, be sisters, support one another. And we're going to get through this, man. You know, it's not easy for any of us, but we're going to do it together. And, and, and there is no, there is no other way. So it's not me reinventing myself. We all need to reinvent ourselves. I mean, uh, I spent the last three months educating myself. I lost the last three months. You know, I don't have enough time in the day to read all the webinars and watch all the seminars and all the good stuff going on. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful platform that, again, the globe comes together and does it. You know, it's, it's I mean, it's love and passion. You know, I, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, on a secondary note, I, might, I don't know if you know this, you don't know this, uh, from 2002 to 2004, I trained my, uh, got my, because I'm a general practitioner, as I said, but I, I trained at the New York University College of Dentistry in the uh, two slash three year program for implantology. Following my training, I was immediately invited to become a, um, a clinic associate, which basically means uh, a guy on roller skates for one year. Uh, and then I was invited to remain as clinical assistant professor. And uh, so I spent about 14 years teaching once weekly, full day in the beautiful and prestigious uh, uh, center there uh, for doctors to come, licensed for licensed dentists to come and train both surgically and uh, uh, academically in implantology. And about, I believe it's two, three years ago, I resigned from my position. We were, uh, we were a great, great team of friends that, uh, you know, you, you, you made friends there for life, all right? Mikey Calderon, uh, uh, you know, I can go on and on, Herbie Mendelssohn, you know, uh, so many names, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes you click with people and sometimes you just go to work. We, we had more fun than I could tell you. So I miss the boys and girls. Uh, we unfortunately lost Dr. Trevor Bavar, who was the pioneer of this whole program. Uh, he recently passed away, uh, I believe a month, a month or two ago. Uh, we miss Trevor very much, and uh, he was a good man, and uh, he had a great sense of humor. But one thing he always said, Paolo, what do you run on candle power in your office? I mean, you know, how can you forget something like that? So you mentioned something very interesting. It's uh, for an overachiever, we talk about you need a strong family. Yes. And uh, so everybody knows, at the beginning of this interview, I had the privilege to meet Dr. Pavel's wife, what do you mean by strong family? How does it help? I'll tell you what I mean by strong family. My mother passed away in November. She had open heart surgery. And uh, uh, unfortunately, two weeks following the procedure, which was supposedly very successful, she passed away from, from an arrhythmia. Uh, this, uh, my mother was my best friend. Uh, she was my role model. She was everything. And I don't want to get emotional. So she basically guides me now. She tells me what to do and what not to do. And sometimes I listen to her and sometimes I don't because I have this thing with temporary amnesia sometimes. But a strong family means this. When Pablo is a bad boy, makes a mistake, his beautiful wife is sitting right in front of me here and her lovely parents, they grab Pablo like a little child and they say, come on, son, we're going to fix this. When Pablo has... Uh, 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 questions and needs a shoulder to cry on. Pablo has a tremendous amount of support behind him. Okay. Do we butt heads at home? Heck yeah. I mean, it's not easy. Because let me tell you something. My wife, she's a, she's a real lady. But she's got a lot in here. Okay. She's got a lot in there. And uh, sometimes I have to listen to her more often. The other thing, you have a yeah, great family. Record, right? This is recorded. You, you will have to live by those words after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the other very important aspect is children. And, you know, for those of us who have chosen to have kids, it's wonderful. For those who have not chosen to have or cannot, uh, it's up to them. I, I don't uh, uh, really uh, have anything to say other than I have two beautiful daughters. And when I look at their faces every day, and uh, my big one likes to come into my room every two minutes and tell me how much he misses me. You know what? That's what life is about, all right? So when Pavel makes mistakes, I have a wall behind me of supporters that are always there for me. So that's why family is very important to me. That's a lot of wisdom, sir. That's a lot. Thank of you. Especially coming from a family of doctors where I can 
I can just imagine the pressure you have to become one yourself. <laughs> you know, it's funny. And I, you know, I'm, I'm so happy because you asked this question because yesterday I was thinking about that. I wanted to bring this up. So when I was a little kid, and I mean, I don't know, uh, we, I came to the USA at age 11. So from age 11 to about 17 until the hormone hits you, you know, when you start like going from, you know, playing with your phone to chasing girls. Until then, I used to fly model airplanes. So every weekend, Pavel was flying model airplanes, the, the remote control ones. And, you know, I was hanging out with the boys in a particular park and we, we had a ball. So I learned English that way. So see now what happens, my amnesia kicks in and then I lose my train of thought. So I go to, you know, go get through high school. And, uh, you know, in those days, high school, there were a lot of bullies going. There were a lot of gang fights. Uh, you know, things were difficult in those days. However, so I go to St. John's University and, you know, they give me a piece of paper and they say, what do you want to major in? So I always like working with my hands, building things. So I write, you know, heck, what do I know in my life? Medicine. So I'm pre-med, all right? So, so I start pre-med. I flunked my first chemistry test in general, Ken, because you know, you know, some professors teach because they love teaching and they want to teach. Other professors teach because of their egos and want to flunk the whole class and then curve up the grades in those days. That's what they used to do. So after I flunked my first chemistry test in general, Ken, I said, I studied so hard for this. You know, how am I going to become anything? So then, fortunately, it, through a, a organic chem, we had Dr. Kukchek, who was, you know, the best teacher in the world, who took you and basically built in the pyramid. And if you were a good boy and did your work, you understood organic chemistry. So in organic chemistry, uh, me and Dr. Himan Susa became the two top students out of, I believe, at that time, 400 people. And uh, we obviously became best friends because <laughs> because it was me and him getting the perfect scores. Now, I don't, have, I don't know if we have time for me to mention this, but it's a little bit of a funny story. Ah, you know what, I'll leave fun. the story. I love fun, go ahead. <laughs> you love fun, okay. I love fun. So, Dr. Kupchak was one of my favorite professors for organic chemistry, but Dr. Kupchak also had his colleague, Dr. Greco, who wasn't well liked, and he was a little bit of a ball breaker, let's say, if it's possible, excuse the language, folks. So we're taking our final exam and we're sitting in an auditorium of probably again, three, 400 people. And in those days we didn't have rugs and carpets, it was tiles. And I don't know if you remember those organic chemistry kits with 50 balls inside them and we used to build models with, right? So everybody's got them sitting at the table and it's pitch quiet in the classroom, all right? And we're taking, this is the final, final exam of organic chemistry. So I, Pavel Krastev, you know, my second name is Murphy. If it can happen to anybody, it's going to happen to me. All right. So I accidentally knocked the damn balls on the freaking floor. And then the whole room turns around and looks at Pavel, you know. So guess what I did? I looked around too and I started looking. So Dr. Greco comes to me, the other professor, and he says, Pavel, you just dropped your balls. I said, Dr. Greco, wait till the exam scores come out. So needless to say, me and Himansu, once again, uh, were the only two, I believe, that uh, uh, aced it down to the T. Zero wrong questions. And, uh, you know, it was a wonderful experience. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm this kind of guy. When I'm passionate about something that I enjoy, and I love dentistry, and I love our patients, and I love our colleagues. But that's the way I operate. That's how my brain operates. <laughs> you know what I see here? It's... I spent also the last three months going through interviews and seminars and conducting a lot of them myself. And I'm coming from more the entertainment world. Mm -hmm. And looking at you, you have, you've done so much. You've gathered so much wisdom. But we need people like you to start teaching because most of the, uh, the seminars we have out there, it's, it's very scientific, it's very useful, but often it's dry and emotionless. Yeah. We need that kind of passion into it. So now uh, a continuous education will become a party. Yeah. And this is what we should be doing, sharing fun time together. Absolutely. And elevating each other. Absolutely agree with you, my friend. You know, you know, we all, we all, you know, you know how I look at it. Uh, while I was teaching at NYU, I had the opportunity to observe many different surgeons 
and uh, 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 basically in, at NYU in the course, all the uh, faculty members were general practitioners. So they, I just want to clarify, they were not oral surgeons, although we uh, got one guy on board uh, later in the program. But it's about learning each other's styles of work. You know, the way I do a crest to lift may be very different than how you do a crest to lift. At the end, we both get a great result. But when you start uh, 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 working with peers and, and, and educating and sharing, not that I'm right or you're wrong, but this way we learn different techniques. We learn different styles. You know, I got to tell you something. There's a million things out there in dentistry that I need to learn myself. Example, connective tissue grafting. I mean, I, I, I've been waiting for years to take a few courses on connective tissue grafting. Why? Because I need to improve that. I, I know I don't even do connective tissue grafting and I'm ashamed to admit that, but I'll tell you the truth. So there's, some, there's only so many days in the week and there's so many hours, but together, yes, I completely agree with you and, uh, uh, and our peers out there watching. You know, we gotta focus on having fun. Let's not break each other's chops. You know, and I'll tell you, uh, and this, this brings me to another very important point that I think uh, I wanna share with the world. I'm a little bit of an old timer when it comes to the way I was trained. Uh, and, you know, and I hate hearing dentists trashing each other and saying, you know, to patients, ah, this guy down the block is no good, come to me. Ah, the other guy is terrible, you know. You know what, patients make their own rational decisions. However, when I, when I see a patient, and believe me, I see plenty. I mean, we have certain big DSO operations around here that, you know, they tell every patient you need a one for. Every patient, I mean, I have people that come to my office with, you know, 17 good teeth, and they told them they wanted the $25,000 a one for. And then I look in their mouths and, and, I, and I have a discussion and I say, wait a minute, you know, we can restore you in 20 different ways and keep all your teeth. What more I would wanna, you know, do all and fall on you. So this agitates me to the point of disgust that there's colleagues who practice this way. Every human being in my chair, every patient is like my mother. It's like you sitting in my chair. This is the way I operate. This is how this is this is something that I'm extremely adamant about educating our colleagues about. You know, we can't look at patients as dollar signs and productions. You know, we have to do what's best for them. We have to educate our patients. We we, we need to let our patients really make the ultimate decision at the end with our guidance how we get there. You know, and uh, like I said, I have a very low volume practice, uh, and but this is how this is what we fight for. You know, and uh, this is something that I would love to share with the world further. Actually, Dr. Pavel, this was supposed to be your interview, but it's too tempting. I have to share with you a hope. You're talking about treating your patient as your family, as your mom. I will give you a hope. It's, uh, I hate to be a dentist because I became a dentist because of my parents. And they, um, I had to have the type B in front of my name just to prove to them that I was worth something. Yeah. That being said, after that, I was thirsty of human connection. Yeah. So I treat every single one of them as a potential friend because I was looking to escape. And here's the, uh, the, a true story though. If you go through what I'm doing, I'm, I'm trying to reinvent dentistry as we speak right now. So if there's a Uber company in the dental field, I am it. And we are still building up. Banks invest money at the seed of that. And when it came to the fact that, you know, banks the, in Canada, they don't take much risk. They're going to just invest in expansion, but not in something new. The person who vouched for me to say that trust in this project, it will go forward. It was a high banking officer who started as a patient. <laughs> Today we're bros, but it was a patient to start with. So you, you never know how treating people well and just like ecos and peers will, will, will get you. Today, I, I am living a Cinderella story for businessmen, thanks to the fact that I connected with my patients. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's such a, if I may comment, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know, my wife and I have this conversation constantly, and here's why. When all my patients come in, new, old, young, doesn't matter, I have a tendency to talk too much, and I have a tendency to become friends with them. So I'm completely understanding uh, your point. And my wife, on the other hand, says, Pavel, you know, please try to be a little more professional. <laughs> not meaning that I'm not professional, but she says, try not to become friends with everybody. I say, but honey, 
If you want me not to try to beat myself, you got to take my heart, carve a quarter of it out, and then, you know, put some masking tape on my mouth because I can't help myself. The other thing that I'm strong, uh, a big believer on, uh, I mean, my office, let me explain a little bit. My office is, okay, my, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law have a very large uh, uh, internal medicine practice. And when Karina and I got married, uh, right before that, I was uh, partners with two gentlemen and we had a state-of-the-art facility that was one of the finest offices that I've ever been uh, a part of. That didn't work out for me for financial reasons, etc. So right when Karina and I got married, her parents invited me to move my practice into their facility. And uh, my parents, uh, excuse me, my in-laws are from Polish background and, uh, you know, uh, they're lovely people. They have a, a pretty large staff. And when we go to work, we have fun. So I'm a strong believer that when you go to work, you got to treat your coworkers, your employees like friends, as opposed to putting stress on them all day and making people, you know, uh, you know, lose their minds, you know? So we like to work peacefully uh, in a friendly manner and have fun doing it, you know? Now, unfortunately with this new protocols that we follow, which are very difficult, you know, I mean, I, I had a huge problem with, I put the shield on my loops and then my lenses were fogging up. All right. Breathing through that N95, breathing, <laughs> breathing through that N95 mask for all of us is, is a nightmare. Okay. So, but what can we do now? My, uh, my wife, you know, she always buys little knickknacks for the office that I probably would never think of, but now she got these shields that are absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's no fogging that issue got resolved actually, I believe two days ago, the first time. But yeah, yeah so, so that's what I believe in. That's, that's how I um, like to run my life. You know, I like to wake up in the morning and feel good. And I like to go to sleep at night and feel good and content that I did the right thing today. Sir, I'll be repeating myself because I, I finish all the interviews with a message of hope, but you're nothing but hope and passion. But if you will have hope for our profession, for our peers to, uh, to go, go through this crisis and to find something good out of it, what would that be? That's a, that's a damn good question. My dream is to see our colleagues from across the globe become closer, to become you know, we can, we can throw little rocks at each other because sometimes we disagree. That's okay. But, but we got to unite. And here's why. If Pavel Krastev for you by yourself, we want to change anything in this world and dentistry, nobody listens because we're one person. But when we have a unit of dentistry globally connected, we become an army. We become an army of hope that we can lead the industry and, and operate the industry in an ethical manner that's consistent with what the, what's be, in the best interest of the world. So I dream of a day that all of our colleagues can essentially even bond more and more and further, all right? Uh, COVID, unfortunately, you know, as sad as it is, it united us further in dentistry. Because I tell you, I never thought this was possible, what's going on. And I got to say again, I thank Dr. Keanu Shah. I take the entire board, Dr. Kavan, you know, Dr. Carlos. I mean, these are some of the best people and the finest human beings on the planet Earth. The webinars, you know, that we did, you know, it, it brings us together, man. You know, and sometimes, you know, the funny thing, sometimes when I share those webinars at some, uh, at some, I say, groups, they, they send me notes, you're advertising. What am I advertising? I'm sharing knowledge, okay? Am I selling you anything? No. Do I? You know, I couldn't care less what you buy. I'm sharing what our peers have created. And groups tell me, well, we don't believe in false advertising. You uh, spam. Uh, okay, you know what? You don't want Pavel Cross in your group? Throw me out. I have zero problem with that. But I will continue sharing these beautiful efforts that are going on. All right. And I'm going to keep doing what I need to do. You know why? because this is what I love doing and I love doing it with the people involved and with all of our peers that I love. How's that? <laughs> I would take this opportunity to thank Dr. Kino Shaw myself to introduce me to a real brother. We just met, it's been about an hour, but I love your energy and yeah, let's do something with this. Um, that was the, the end of the interview, but now I have to resist because we still, 
we're overtime anyway, so who cares? We, we came together, so you, you can collaborate on a, a book that I'm writing with Dr. Shaw. It's called The Power of BR. And, and not doctor, BR is needed, the title of nobility that our family wants us to have. So you are, again, you are all about hope. You're all about passion and positivity. And you've been a doctor many all your life. You have been uh, raised in a family of doctor. So if we're just going to dig into it, and I believe that's going to be your, your chapter. How can you take, or how can you, you justify the power you have holding that function and holding that title to always reinvent yourself and to move forward? You know, it's, it's, it's an internal energy that, for the most part, I'm blessed to say my wife gives me, you know, because my wife, and let me tell you, I'm not an easy guy. Uh, I have many faults, <laughs> and I've made some seriously, seriously delinquent mistakes in my life, like we all have. We're humans. But if I didn't have my wife behind me, you know, as I say, you know, uh, I'm the head in the family, but she's the neck, you know. I, let me end it on that. But to uh, re respond to your question, uh, uh, if I'm given the opportunity to uh, help in any way, shape, or form with your project and the book, I will be so honored to do so that I have no words. Actually, don't let me down now. Go. Oh. Look, <laughs> I'm hooked. <laughs> Everybody, this was Dr. Pavel Krastev. It was an introduction. And uh, yeah, I had a list of questions. I couldn't go through it. And this is way, way funner. Um, Dr. Pavel, let's meet again. I can't wait to read your chapter about the doctor or the, the power of DR. And um, let's say this out loud. You know, people know that I can be very crazy when I connect with people. You were talking about writing a book about your life. You we're talking yep. about looking to, to uh, maybe for us to calibrate. I have one for you and we can either collaborate or I can help you go through with this. And oh, believe me, if you put the time necessary, it's like about two hours a day, you have your book within 30 days. Somebody like you, maybe 15 days. But uh, I'm slow. Maybe, give me, give me a, give me a month or two. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to this interview, you have half your book written already. <laughs> the title will be overachievers. I had a I like that. On this subject, let me tell honey to write it. Honey, write that down. Overachievers. That would be I the like that. book. We can either now, refer it or I can guide you through it. And I also have many peers that would love to join in to that book. Yes, that's exactly my next with question. Energy, with your energy, let's make sure that we can finish the power of PR as soon as possible. Yes, you know, I still have seven books to read to write before the end of August. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I need energy. I need people like you. <laughs> so let, let's forget the VR for now. Pavel, it was a real pleasure. And you started with the fact that you called me a brother. I didn't answer to that because I didn't know what to answer. Today, I am honored by your welcoming warmth. And yes, I want to be your brother. <laughs> Well, I thank you, Dr. Bach. It was uh, uh, a pleasure to meet you. And uh, you know what? I want to thank our audience and our peers and our colleagues across the world. And uh, again, special thanks. I mean, Dr. Keanu, sure, I could talk about him all day. But, uh, you know, this guy is a guy that you cannot not fall in love with, you know? So I look forward to all of us meeting one day and having a couple of beers. But you're going to be buying, okay? No problem. <laughs>